Hey, what's up, dudes? Welcome to a very different video for my channel, um, but a necessary one for me because of what I'm doing right now. I started a Dungeons and Dragons campaign uh, last year, and we got hit with the spiraling uh, scheduling of death, but we've recently, within the past month, been able to start it back up. And I want to share a couple of tips that I wish... I knew when I started D&D. Like, these are some tips that I haven't really... At least one of these tips is one that I haven't seen anyone else talk about. And it's something that, like, really hit me out of nowhere. And something that I had to figure out on my own. And it was very difficult and very annoying. <laughs> um, but I wanted to share it with y'all. With a couple of other tips that, like, have really um, helped me with the 11 sessions that I've been able to do with my players. So we're going to start with the, the biggest one, I guess. Um, I, I really want, if, if you only hear one of these, I want you to hear this one. Stores. In these pre-made modules, as good as some of them are, they give you nothing when it comes to stores. They will, at the back of the book for at least Descent into Avernus, they will give you the name of the store, a description of the store, who works in the store, and maybe that store has a side quest, which some do in, De in Descent into Avernus, but they give you no, for lack of a better word, stock for the store, right? They don't give you any items that go in the store, they don't give you prices, anything like that. I was, I've kind of been side uh, swiped <laughs> by my players a couple of times, like doing something that I should have knew they were going to do, like going to a store. I'm like, oh, okay, I got the player's handbook, that shouldn't be too difficult, but. Then they go in and you're like, oh shit, what's in the store? Like, I have Barthens Provisions and it gives me a description of who runs Barthens, a description of the store, a little bit of history of the store, and that's it. Um, so the main thing I can give you, and I'll link it in the description, is 5emagic.shop. Uh, this has been a saving grace of mine. I've been able to prepare stock for every store in Lost Mines of Fandelver. And um, I've even created stores thanks to this for Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus. Because there are stores there, but I wanted to add a couple of more. And it stocked every single one of them based on uh, how big the city and or town is, uh, how many items I want in the store, uh, what kind of items I want in the store, and the prices for those items. And they even give you a price percentage uh, slider for discounts or inflation. And it's just... Holy crap, has it been a saving grace. No more of my players walking into a store and I'm like, hi, how are you? And they're like, oh yeah, well, look at what you got. And I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, and I get out my player's handbook and I start frantically scrolling uh, back towards the equipment page. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe that would be here. Maybe this would be here. Uh, how much would this person charge for this, considering this just happened? Uh, and I'll completely forget about my actual items that could possibly be uh, in the area. Um, so no more of that. This has just been a saving grace for me. I've been able to prepare so many stores so quickly. It could even do traveling merchants as well. It's just so helpful for a new DM. I, I haven't seen this literally anywhere in any of the videos I've, I've, I've watched for DM tips, new DM tips. Um, it's not in the Dungeons Master, Dungeon Master's Guide as far as I've been able to read. It's not in the Player's Handbook. Um, I've found the website through reddit you know some people talking about it on reddit so hopefully it's immortalized in this video and new dms can come here and watch this and they'll know to be ready for this shit because oh it will really hit you if you're not ready and like i think the most frustrating part about it is is you feel like you're hampering your players in a certain way like oh well damn i didn't know what should be there so they might not have gotten some items that they definitely could have used or needed if they had the gold uh, moving forward so being able to make sure your players have what they need maybe not specifically what they want as far as items go but like stuff that they could need could want in the future like that's always nice the next thing is really like i've seen a lot of videos where they're like don't over prepare and i heavily disagree with that i feel like to a certain extent there's definitely like over preparing um trying to figure out every specific path that your players could go in it's just not going to work um you're going to think you have it all figured out and they're just going to go in a completely different direction 
and because you tried to over prepare for it you won't be ready to improv it but i do think thinking about the things that could possibly happen and like writing down some little bullet points like if uh, party does A, then B happens. If party does A, then C happens. If party does B, then D happens. You know, just some little bullet points on where it could go just so you're ready to improvise those situations, uh, like mentally preparing yourself. Uh, and I don't think it's harmful to do that for, you know, a lot of situations or at least as many as you can think of without sitting there thinking for three hours on it, right? Like some obvious pops right into the mind situations like bullet point those i also don't think it's a bad thing to prepare some encounters that you know the players will enter right later on if you're writing your own campaign or if you're adding your campaign into a module and you have a specific specific story point that you know you want to hit no matter how the characters end up there without railroading them they'll always end up at this point is that railroading kind of but you know story beats gotta happen whether it happens in point a point b or point c if you can figure out a way for that event to happen in all three write that encounter in advance and write down bullet points of what you want the villain to say foreshadow it um why is it happening maybe something happens earlier in the the campaign that leads to it um make sure you're prepared for those moments instead of being like oh well it could happen right now and just throwing it at your players unprepared and i think my last tip is it kind of goes along with over preparing um especially if you're playing with a newer group like my group is uh, a group of friends uh, my significant other her brother um and my best friend my best friend is actually um very knowledge on the indie and has played before but he is kind of uh shepherding us new players even his dm along um so when it comes to playing with new players especially players who have no prior knowledge or experience with dungeons and dragons they're not all gonna go out and just buy the player's handbook or any of these other books to where they could get stuff from like a more experienced engaged player or someone who has played like dra uh, dra dungeons and dragons games and Baldur's Gate or whatever uh, might be like, okay, I'm really into it. I haven't played, but I'm really into it. I'm going to go buy the player's handbook. But um, most people don't do that. And I think it's clunky operating Dungeons & Dragons, the player's handbook, uh, through your phone on D&D and beyond. A lot of people just aren't going to do that, even if they have it downloaded and will uh, view it for certain things. They're not going to be scrolling through every page looking for specific things that they can do. So... Um, handouts on the things that they can do that they might not be looking for is a good idea. I just made handouts for uh, supplies, tools, and kits, uh, like a big handout giving a list of what they are, what they do, um, and what they could possibly do, uh, their benefits, and I made a downtime activities handout uh, listing out all the downtime activities that they have and um, a little description of them. So, like, handouts for people who aren't buying the player's handbook, um, don't know that that's something they should do. I mean, you can always just recommend they go buy the player's handbook, but then still they might not read it. Uh, I, I definitely believe, like, especially for new players, you've got to cut them some slack and put in the work yourself to give them handouts on things that they should know that they can do. And maybe that will then inspire them to maybe grab the player's handbook and further read on different things that they could do that could lead them to like multi-classing or whatever else uh but either way whether it's handouts for that whether it's handouts for your stores that you've stocked that's a really good idea by the way that's something i actually have to do this week because you can generate the stores but your players still aren't going to be able to correctly use them if you have to sit there and read out all the stock on your own because you put in some persuasion checks to get some under the table stuff on the main piece of paper but these i mean basic tips obviously right uh these are just some really basic tips that i wish i would have found really uh even watching like channels like the dm layer and dungeon dudes and uh some other popular channels um it's just stuff that didn't really i i didn't really hear about or anything so i really do hope this helps some you know newer dm that happens upon my channel this video maybe i hope this helps you uh and if it does then you'll never know how much it did <laughs> so uh yeah that's gonna do it for me thank you all so much for watching my name is student i've been your host i'll see you guys 
uh, next time. Peace out.